Lasagna doesn't need to be complicated. Yes, it does take a little bit of time, but it's totally worth it. Let's get into making this delicious recipe. To start, we're going to need two brown or yellow onions. We're going to slice off the tips, leaving the root intact, slice them in half through the root. And we're going to use one and a half for one part of this dish and then half of one for another bit. As for the half, just pop this aside for the time being and then move one and a half of the onions. Just dice these up into small to medium sized pieces, making sure they're the same size and just trim off any excess flesh from around the root and you can save that for a stock. Next is two medium sized carrots or one large one. You don't have to peel these, you can just give them a wash. Slice off the tips, slice them in half and then slice off a strip to make them sit flat on the bench. Slice these into strips, then slice the strips into battens. Rotate the battens 90 degrees and then dice into medium pieces. Lastly for the sofrito, one rib of celery is needed. Do the same thing as we did with the carrots, slice it in half and then just slice these into battens. Rotate those battens 90 degrees and then just dice into medium sized pieces, making sure it's the same size as everything else. Now with that half onion that we saved before, what we're going to do is pin some bay leaves on this with some cloves. This is a beautiful infusion and it's called an onion peak. People know it as an onion clute, but the clute is actually the bay leaves and the cloves that are studded before they actually attach to the onion, therefore making it a peak. But you don't have to do this, this just adds infusion. And if you just want to save ingredients and not worry about this, it doesn't really matter, but obviously it is going to increase the flavor. Also, I should probably mention that I'm using four cloves and three dried bay leaves. You can also use fresh if you wanted to. With the prep out of the way, place a large high rim pan or pot over a medium high heat. Add in two tablespoons of olive oil. You can use extra virgin olive oil here if you wanted to. Then we're going to add in all of that sofrito. Make sure you scrape the bowl to avoid any waste. Hit it up with a little bit of salt, which will extract moisture and help flavor development. And then just give this a mix around. We're going to cook this for about five to six minutes, upwards of eight minutes, depending on the heat of your pan and the distribution that it has. And just keep mixing it around just so it doesn't burn. This is pretty much sweating off, which means cooking without color. All you're looking for is something that looks like this. Next, we're going to need 500 grams of pork mince as well as 500 grams of beef mince. If you can get veal, just swap it for the beef. I couldn't get hold of it, so beef's the next best solution. And these ones are quite lean. You can use fattier ones if you wanted to, but it's completely up to you. With that in, break this up with a wooden spoon. We're going to cook this for about five to six minutes and just until it's no longer brown. And we also want to break it up so there's no large chunks. Hit it up with some salt during this process as well as cracked black pepper. 20 cracks worth. And then just continue mixing. All we want to do is just brown this off until it's no longer pink and you should have something that looks like this. It's now time to deglaze with red wine. This is one cup or 250 milliliters. If you can't consume alcohol, just use beef stock. I know people are going to complain and say that's not traditional, but not everyone can consume alcohol and I want to make my recipes accessible to everyone. What we're going to do is mix this around, bring it to a boil and cook it for about three minutes until it's reduced by half. Then add in 1.2 kilos of diced or passata tomatoes. I like mine a little bit more rustic, that's why I'm using diced tomatoes, but if you want it really, really smooth and traditional, it is passata. Anyway, just mix this through until everything is evenly combined. It is now a good time to just check it for seasoning and adjust if necessary. I ended up adding a little bit more salt and another 20 cracks of black pepper. If you have added seasoning, just mix this around one more time, bring it back to a simmer, then place on a lid, reduce the heat to low, and cook this for one hour. Now after one hour, carefully remove the lid, being careful of any escaping steam. There'll be a lot of flavor development on the top. Just make sure you mix this through, make sure everything's evenly combined and you will notice that there's a little bit less moisture obviously than there was before. We're then going to add in one cup or 250 milliliters of beef stock. Doesn't matter if you use beef stock before, just add more. This is going to increase the moisture and also prevent it from burning. Keep it over a low heat and now cook it for an hour without the lid on. Now to make the bechamel or white sauce, place a saucepan over a medium high heat. Add in 800 milliliters of whole fat milk. We're going to add in that onion peak for infusion and then just warm this up very slowly in the background. We don't want this to be boiling or even at a simmer. Place another saucepan over a medium high heat. Add in 80 grams of unsalted butter. Allow this to melt and then add in 80 grams of plain all purpose flour. You can either use a whisk or a spatula here. Give this a really good mix through. Make sure you keep this moving otherwise it will burn and you can reduce the heat as well if you do notice it. What we're going to do is cook this for two minutes. This is going to create a roux and this is a thickening agent that's used in a lot of French cuisines. Once the milk's nice and warm and that roux's been cooked for two minutes, add in two ladles of milk at a time. We don't want to pour this all in, the roux won't really know what to do. And the reason we also heat that milk up is just so we don't cool that roux down. We want to keep this nice and hot and that way it will cook and thicken a lot quicker. Once you've added that in, just keep mixing it around until that roux has absorbed all of that moisture. You'll notice this is thicker, but it's also not as thick as it was originally. Then continue adding in two ladles at a time just until you get to the end amount of milk and then we can add it all in. Discard that onion peak, it's no longer needed if you used it of course. And then just continue mixing until you have this beautiful silky smooth sauce. 
Also, what we're making is called a blonde roux. There is also a brown roux. They're used for different applications, but that's pretty much irrelevant to this dish. I just thought I'd share that. Anyway, once you have a silky smooth sauce that looks like this, turn it off the heat, and then we can grate in one quarter of a teaspoon of fresh nutmeg. You can also use pre-ground stuff if you want to. Season it up with some salt as well as ground white pepper. Don't use cracked black pepper, otherwise you have black chunks through it. And I'm also grating in 20 grams of Parmesan cheese. It's completely optional. It's more of a Mornay when you add cheese, but this is not enough to call it a Mornay. With that in, give this another really good mix through until everything's combined, that cheese is melted and it's again silky smooth. Check out for seasoning and then we can remove it from the stovetop. Now I highly recommend using fresh lasagna sheets. You can even make your own or buy store-bought. I have cheated and just used store-bought because this recipe does take a little bit of time but it's up to you. And if you do use dried stuff, I'll leave details about that in the description. To prepare the baking dish, add a small amount of olive oil to it or butter and then just spread it out with some paper and make sure that this is not pulled up. If you do have too much in there, I do recommend removing it. You just want that nice little shear on there. After two hours on the ragu, we should have something that looks like this. There's not a really big pool of moisture in there. It is absolutely beautiful. Just check it one last time for seasoning before we can then scoop one to one and a half ladles of that beef into the bottom of the pan and then just spread it out on the bottom to make a thin layer doesn't have to be too much and you don't have to completely cover the bottom. Let's then go over the top with those lasagna sheets. You don't have to overlap them too much and just break them up to make them fit and just make sure you cover all of that ragu. The next step is the bechamel. I see a lot of other recipes use a lot less than me. You can of course do that, just half the bechamel recipe that we did, but I like to make this nice and creamy and smooth. And I've used roughly about five tablespoons worth here. Just using a spatula to spread this out, make sure you cover it again. And then we can go over with the beef mince again, one and a half to two ladles worth. Spread this out, making sure it's completely covered. And it's just pretty much going like this the whole way through until everything is evenly layered. In between the layers, I like to add some Pecorino Romano cheese. You can also use Parmesan, even some provolone cheese if you want to. I'm also using some mozzarella slices, just breaking these up. Fresh buffalo mozzarella is fantastic if you can get hold of it. And you can spread this around as if you were topping a pizza. Once that's done, keep repeating that with the lasagna, the bechamel, the beef mince, the cheese, and then on the last layer, just cover it with the remaining bechamel. Some other recipes put the sauce on the top. It's up to you how you want to do it. Once that's done, you have a beautiful assembled lasagna, roughly three to four layers. Cover it with some aluminium foil, tin foil, whatever you want to call it. Place it in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius and cook this for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, remove it from the oven and then just carefully remove that tin foil. You can also add cheese beforehand, but if you add the tin foil, it's going to get stuck, so I don't recommend doing it. With that off, add over some Pecorino Romano, Parmesan, Provolone, Mozzarella, it's up to you. Place it back into the oven in the same temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes until it's beautifully golden on top. Allow this to cool down for about 30 minutes. It will set, make it a lot easier to cut. Then we can portion this out, scoop it out, and you have this fantastic looking lasagna. There's so much moisture, and it is absolutely beautiful. Also on the outer edges, you get that beautiful golden crust, as well as on the top from not adding that sauce. You can serve the lasagna with whatever you want, garlic bread, some salad, drizzle it with some olive oil, garnish it with some basil. And there we have a delicious, beautiful, and fragrant lasagna. With that all done, there is only one thing left to do, and that is, of course, we can then dig in. Everyone makes lasagna differently. Obviously, if the layers are done correctly, it's gonna get a beautiful moisture in there, but I like the way that we don't cover it with sauce at the top. You have the bechamel and then that cheese. It creates a beautiful texture when you bite into it. It just gives it that nice little crunch. And then the fantastic flavors in the center. Absolutely beautiful dish. It does take a little bit of time, but it's highly recommended. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. It really does help me out. Consider subscribing as well, along with hitting the bell notification next to it so you never miss one I upload. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.